Okay, push the record button. That means I'm recording. This is Ham Radio Now, episode number 392, uh, continuing part of my Yuma Ham Fest series. This is one of the seminars, Aries and Agency Relationships. I'm your host, David Goldenberg, W0DHG, and um, this is the second of the videos that I shot at the Yuma Ham Fest. And uh, it's uh, starring my friend and uh, DEC for the Los Angeles section uh, Aries Northwest, Ruzi Moberry, W1EH. Uh, Ruzi's going to talk about um, Aries and uh, how to manage your relationship with served agencies. It's a really good talk. Um, I enjoyed it. I think it may be a little light in the room because it was dark uh, to show the slideshow, but I think the sound level should be good, uh, better than the last attempt that I had. And um, I hope you get something out of it and I hope you enjoy it. Here and uh, everybody can come in and, and join in as, as, as we progress. Um, I think most of you or a lot of you know me. I'm Ruzi, W1EH. I'm uh, from the Los Angeles area. I'm uh, one of the district emergency coordinators for Aries. Uh, I do the Northwest District. And uh, we'll get going and uh, we can talk about it. Stop me at any time. My, my usual disclaimer here, some of you have seen it before. Uh, the information I share with you is my own opinion or what's worked for me. I do not know it all. Contrary to what I tell myself, my team, you, and especially my wife, please use the information adjusted to your needs or your area or your partner agency. The biggest thing that's worked for me is attitude, dedication, and integrity. Uh, again, this is an open forum. Jump in any time. Uh, we're lucky to have uh, David Goldenberg, W0DHE, from Ham Radio Now doing a podcast. So it, would, it will be available if you, for whatever reason, you want to listen to this again. Um, and uh, please uh, check out his other podcasts. A little bit about Aries. Everybody know, pretty much know about Aries. We're all in emergency communication. Anybody not know about Aries? All right, then I won't spend too much time on it. Nobody rose their hand. Um, again, I am from the Los Angeles section. And Aries is not a radio club. We are an emergency communications organization. Uh, different parts of the area, uh, of the country, uh, areas and races are, are combined, or uh, a single organization. Uh, that's not the case in the Los Angeles area. Can everybody hear me back there? Okay, good. Thank you. Um, some of the partner agencies we have within areas, we have the Los Angeles County Medical Alert Center, which we call the MAC, the National Weather Service. Uh, we are now uh, the official partner in the Los Angeles area with the California Highway Patrol. Uh, we actually have an agreement with the California National Guard now uh, in the Northwest District, and we support several uh, EOCs within the city and county of Los Angeles, and, uh, and some of our uh, districts support the Veterans Administration. We currently have 72 hospitals that we have agreements with, some community events we support, Baker to Vegas, AC100, National Night Out LA, with LAPD, community fairs, field day, etc and some agency partners, Red Cross, Salvation Army, FEMA. Some, something we did, we've recently done in Los, Ange Los Angeles area, and we're going to get more into that, is we're starting to bring all the uh, emergency communication groups together. Um, there are three big ones, ARIES, Amateur Radio Emergency Service, ACS, Auxiliary Communication Service, and DCS, Disaster Communication Service, which is uh, sponsored by the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Um, for many years, we did our own thing. Nobody wanted to work together. But uh, a few years ago, um, probably about five years ago, I started feeding this to the county and the, and the city. And uh, got some feet, pushback at first, but now at the command level of the Sheriff's Department and the Los Angeles uh, Emergency Management Department, the Emergency Operations Center, Emergency Manager, City Attorney's Office, et cetera, we're, we're, we're start and the HR uh, we're, we're starting to get some momentum. So we're, we're, we've been meeting, we're meeting uh, about every month, is that right, David, or so? Uh, we're developing an SOP for all these organizations to work together. Um, we're doing, working on credentialing, we're working on a training curriculum, joint exercises and drills, and uh, plans to bring other smaller emergency communications group in the city and county uh, into the picture. Each of these organizations will still stay autonomous, which we'll get into a little later. We all have our own missions, but we all need to be able to talk to each other. And the uh, county at the upper level and the city at the upper level understand that, and they're finally starting to understand communications. 
Uh, I'm not sure in your areas where you come from if that's an issue for us with 15 million people in the city and county of Los Angeles. A lot of bureaucracy, a lot of red tape, um, a lot of power trips, and uh, you know we're 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 getting ahead of that or or beating that now. Um, other things we're now be able to do, and we're developing direct communication between the city and county EOCs. In the past, they really haven't talked to each other. Uh, city of Los Angeles uh, technically reports to the county of Los Angeles as their operational area. But except for cell phones and landlines, they had no other way of talking. Didn't work, it didn't work. And they, in, the, in the past, they haven't written communications into any of their plans. So we're, uh, with David uh, Mallon over there, myself and some other people, we're bringing that, that attention. So situational awareness is important. Infrastructure reporting, uh, hospital long-term care facilities are very important. Um, California Highway Patrol was out of the picture in the past didn't really have a presence in, uh, with the uh, EOCs, now they do. Um, they've become actually a very good partner and we're expanding that relation, relationship. They are the state police force um, and uh, we're training a lot of their officers and, and senior volunteers in communications. Uh, past three years we've been working with the California National Guard and we understand the California National Guard doesn't necessarily come in immediately. It could be several hours to several days, uh, even weeks, depending on the situation before they come in, but that relationship is very important. Uh, the BOC, Business Operations Center, the City of Los Angeles and the Emergency Management Department, the EOC, has a business operations center which deals with business continuity. In addition to that, what they deal with is talking to the big corporations such as Walmart or Walgreens or Target about getting supplies in there because what do all those companies have? They have excellent distribution points you know, where the cities and counties and FEMA not necessarily doesn't. So uh, we built that relationship and, and communication between them. The NGOs, non-government organizations, and the VOADs. Any questions so far? Good. For those of you new, uh, emergency communications also called MCOM or ECOM and a lot of other acronyms. Um, anybody have another explanation or not know what emergency communications is? Who here actually supports a, uh, an MCOM group or emergency communications group within the area? Okay, good, good, good. Well, if you don't and it's something that you're interested in, I would suggest, you know, checking with your local Aries or, uh, or RACES organization, um, even Mars if uh, that's what you're into. Very, very important because uh, with Har Harvey and Irma and Maria, uh, the fires in uh, Northern California, the Thomas Fire, all proved is ham radio and emergency communications is vital. Every single one of those, to some extent, we were involved. And, uh, and they're starting to get it out there. I didn't think they got it five, 10 years ago. I mean, what do you guys think? You know, we, we, we were all being supported out there, but not to the extent we are now. Some of you may have seen the slide before. You know, we're amateurs by, by name only, and they put this together. Um, because the only difference between us and the professional should be compensation. We don't get compensated. But we should never be amateurish. We've all seen that amateurish ham who shows up, you know, doesn't know what to do, doesn't have his radio programmed, etc. And we, we need to either train those people or ask them to, to leave our organization. So my attitude is professionalism is not just being good at what you do, but has a lot with how you look, act, and how you do it. So, and, it, and, it's, and it's working for our, our groups out there. Uh, we're also not first responders. I know a lot of hams think they're first responders. We're, no, we're not. We're ready responders. We respond when asked to by our organization, group, or partner agency. And you should never respond for yourself. It's dangerous out there. You know, we did a Skywarn net several years ago in California when we did have rain. And uh, one of the guys got jumped in his van and started going through the canyons and giving me reports. That's, that's, that's not smart. Because if something happens to him, he, you know, he goes off a cliff, I don't know what happened. Where to find him. Now I've got to send in first responders to find him. So don't try to be a hero. And your job is communications. If you're not on the radio, you're not helping. You know, several years ago, I went to the uh, uh, Whittier EOC. And... Uh, the interim police chief was there, the city manager, the city emergency manager, and the city attorney. 
and the police chief was up there talking about disasters and how the police department uh, responds and so forth and it, it was just a group of hams in there and one of the hams way in the corner had a question was hand he goes what what guarantee do we have in a disaster you're gonna let us in to take pictures and I didn't really understand that at that time I'm going, what's this guy talking about you know we're ham radio operators we don't necessarily take pictures except Bernard over there um, but uh, and he goes well it depends on the situation if it's safe we're gonna let you in and uh, Another guy rose his hand and goes, what guarantee is that? And uh, he said, well, it really depends. You know, I, I can't put you in, a, in an unsafe situation. So he went on and on, and I was the next speaker, and I went up there and I said, by the way, your job is communications. Your job is not to put yourself or anybody else in danger. If they want you to take pictures and you're available to do that, you do that. But other than that, don't put yourself in danger you are there to support this agency. At the end of the meeting, the city manager, the uh, city attorney, and the city emergency manager came up and said, thank you, that's what we needed them to hear. So sometimes hams try to run a, 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 a situation. We're there to support. We want to help. Sometimes we can be overbearing, but sometimes you know we, we, we cannot be unwelcome. So attitude and professionalism, you know, it's always good to keep a positive attitude. I know that most of you do, and it's just that one rare ham, uh, or rare volunteer, it's not only hams, other volunteers, you know, they have a terrible attitude, um, they get ticked off, they lose their cool, etc. So try not to do that. Also, if things aren't going well, it's not failures, to delay success, you want to, you know, have a, you know, put like a correct term for it. You know, things don't necessarily go well at every disaster or every drill or exercise. Just walk away. You know, make, you know, do it to the best of your ability. Always look your best, you know. You don't have to have a uniform with your organization, but have a uniform look if you can. You know, I don't you know, wear Aries on my shirt, I just have emergency communications on there. You know, we ask all our people that, that do support events to have the shirt, have a, you know, a uniform look in the pants. Uh, make sure you know your, your clothes are clean, they're ironed. Uh, don't show up like you're going to a picnic. You know, shorts and flip-flops don't belong in a, in a drill. But I've seen people do that, I've seen hams do that. And don't show up like you're a SWAT member. You know, there's that one guy who's got all the time in the world and all the money, and he's got two radios, and he's got two ear buds in there, and he's got, you know, the pack on, on his leg, and he's, he's, he's got more things than SWAT does. You know, I was up in uh, another state uh, earlier, or, Mid last year, they invited me to uh, to evaluate and, and help with communications for their statewide exercise. And I saw him there, and he was wearing his khaki pants and plaid shirt and suspenders. And he had seven bow fangs hanging off of his suspenders. <laughs> okay, well, I'm not sure. I mean, I've used two radios myself, but after that, I'm going. Okay, you don't need that. How many other how many of the first responders have seven radios hanging off their suspenders or their clothes? Okay, I'm not sure who he was going to talk to you know, how many bands he needed, but he had seven, I mean, I counted them. Seven rate bow fangs. You know, it's a good deal, you know, 210 bucks for seven radios. Go ahead. He had bow fangs, he had to have stairs. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you, there you go. And, 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 and for the, and, you know, and, and again, I, I'm not a fan of those radios, and I know a lot of people in here are, and people, people that have seen, heard my talk about Bofangs, Baofangs, Ding Dangs, and all these other weird radios. CCCs. I call them CCCs. Thank you very much. <laughs> Everybody knows what that stands for, right? Cheap, Cheap Chinese, Chinese. Crap. crap. Thank you. You know, it's if that's what you can afford and that's what you want, or the backup radio, it's okay. But to me, seven defeated the purpose. You know, also look like you're prepared. Don't look like you just you know show up. You don't have any documentation. You don't have a pad. You don't have any idea what the today, the mission is. So dress for the event. All makes sense, right? I'm preaching to the choir, right? Okay. Also, make sure your people are well trained. They're knowledgeable. They're active. You know, Aries. I got to say, Los Angeles. We have a lot of people on the books, like many, many organizations, but not all of them are active. I mean, does that does everybody anybody here have 100% activity with their organization? We always have those ID card collectors, or they come when, when they think it's ne it's important, or you know, if there's a disaster, I'm going to come. Well, guess what? They're not trained. 
they don't know your procedures. They don't know what's been going on. So they're not up, up to it. You also want to work as an organized team. It, makes, it just makes absolute sense. Follow policies and instructions. You want to be competent and resor resourceful. And inactive, unprepared hams a liability. It, re it really is. Um, we had a uh, statewide medical disaster exercise several years ago. And uh, we we're deploying our people. And one of, the, one of my hospitals called me on my cell phone. I didn't recognize the number. I answered the phone. and go, hey, Ruzi, this is so-and-so. Uh, we have this ham showed up, and he says he's here to support us. He's an Aries, he says he's an Aries member, but he's not on, on, the, on our list that you gave us. And I said, what's his name? He gave me the name and the call sign. I said, don't recognize it. And he said, he's got an ID. It says Aries on it. I said, can you take a picture of the ID and send it to me? Mm -hmm. And uh, she did, and she texted me the, uh, the, the ID, and I look at it, and I go, that's not our ID. This guy went on eBay and ordered an ID card. It says Aries, it has <laughs> Angeles on it. I said, please ask him to contact me and uh, that he's not needed and that you got the situation well in hand. So you have people showing up. We did in that case, and, and it's happened at other disasters because I've, I listened to fire and, and, and police scanners and, and talked to fire and police. And uh, recently in some of the fires in the Los Angeles area, uh, and somebody else told me this too, that people showed up as firefighters. They had the whole getup. By radio, helmet, jacket, just to support the fire command. Yeah, somebody was paying attention, something didn't look right, they didn't act right, they caught him and they arrested him. So that's what I kind of think about the inactive, unprepared hams. They show up, he may be a member of your organization, but he's not a, he's not a card carrying or current, uh, and it's a liability. If I had this guy went in this hospital, I don't know what his background is. I don't know if he's an active shooter. I don't know if he's a child molester. I don't know what his, his, his deal is. And that's gonna reflect back on your organization. And your organization should have a clear mission goal. And I, and I gotta be honest, when I first joined my organization, I didn't think there was any clear guidance or goal. I didn't even know what to do. So, I, and, I, and, and because of our members and, and things, and we're getting better, and, We've changed. We actually have a mission. We have a goal. Um, and when you do have a drill or exercise, no, make sure everybody's aware of what today's mission is. Why are we here? What is, what's the goal? And I can't tell you how many times I've seen this, and not only with my group, but other groups that I've seen. They show up with their radio unprogrammed. Okay, they, well, I got that one frequency in there. Well, do you have a whole frequency list in there? No. Do you have the frequencies I sent you in there? No. What are they? It takes time. Make sure they have documentation, pens, pencils. I know this stuff makes sense to most of us, but I've seen people not show up with a pen or pencil without some forms. And make sure they understand net procedures, command staff. Training, I'm not gonna spend too much of it. You know, keep it fun. You know, keep it as real as possible and so forth. Train with other groups, interoperability, and that's what we're starting to do uh, in LA very soon. We're gonna work with our partner, uh, ham radio groups, and uh, make sure that we know how they work and they know how we work. And get your people ICS, CPR, first aid, and AED trained. You know, this past uh, week and a half ago, I had this big organization in LA said, hey, we have plenty of room in our uh, CPR, AED class. It's an all day class and it's free. So I put, sent out the message and got some responses. And so it, it's out there. Some of the things we're trying to get ever re requiring and it's been a battle to get some of our people trained, but we are working on uh, getting our people to get uh, all this training. Uh, obviously, you have to be a, a, a ham. And it says technician license or higher, but I guess you could be a novice. Um, FEMA ICS courses. Is that a requirement for, for all of your other groups, the, the FEMA courses? And has that been a benefit? Okay, so we all understand how incident command works and everybody else. Uh, some of the other ICS courses, the 101, the 240, the 242, 244, there's a lot of cor ICS courses, leadership and communications and so forth. Um, the ARRL MCOM course, you know, the, the level EC001, it's a great course. How many people have taken it? Anybody? Was it beneficial to you? Did you guys learn anything? Yes. Good. Yeah, if you haven't taken it, I suggest you take it. It is $50. Uh, it, is on, it is on, most of it is online and you have a mentor and then there's a lot of uh, projects or uh, 
uh, instruction that you have to do and homework, but it, 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 it is one of the things that ARRL does well. Um, CERT level one, at least, I'm, I'm CERT level, everybody, anybody CERT level trained? So get your CERT level training. Uh, we talked about first, first aid CPR. Um, what we've started in, in my district is, uh, in order to get an ID card now, you have to participate in at least two drills. Before we had members, they came and got, got ID cards, I would never see them again. But they had ID cards from every other group too. They had Red Cross, Salvation Army, ACS, DCS, I don't, I don't know, what, whatever other ID card. Yes? Is that guy Corey? No, he's not. Oh, because I was going to ask, what, what was his, you know, they put out that bulletin that they were going to train to a standard all areas. Right. Where's that at? Well, I'll tell you, yeah, I can, I can answer that for you. Yeah. They're still working on it. Okay, they were, uh, what, what uh, David Mallon is talking about is in the beginning of uh, January, uh, there was a, a letter that went out from the ARRL that they're going to try to standardize some things with, uh, within ARIES training and, and documentation and forms and, and re registering members and so forth. Um, I think they're still trying to figure out how to handle that and get the documentation out. So we're so not. a good thing or a bad thing? I, I think it's a good thing as long as local control is not lost because it's different in every area. Phoenix is different than LA. LA is different than Orange County. Orange County is different than San Jose. So I think it's good for, uh, for some type of uh, basics, basis for training, but not for control. So I think we've needed it for a long time, but just how they roll it out I think is going to make a difference. Anybody have any opinions on it? Anybody, everybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. Well, I think it's going to be necessary for exchange between ARIES organizations when that's required. When they need to call up people from other neighboring areas. Right, you're talking about like ARIES MAT, like Mary's, yeah. uh, mutual assistance team, absolutely. So I think it's good. I just hope they roll it out properly. Um, so don't know. We'll have to wait and see. So I said the league does some good things and they do some not good things. I put that on tape. <laughs> Please edit that out. No, I'm okay. I'm actually okay. Um, and again, you know, some of the things if we've done and we're starting to do and that may work for you, bring all the emergency communication ham groups together. It's very, very important because you're not going to be able to do it all. Um, you need to know what their mission is. You need to, uh, we need to do, uh, sorry, they need to know what your mission is. Um, we, talk, we talked about LA. ARIES supports hospitals and the CHP mainly. ACS, Auxiliary Communication, supports the City of Los Angeles, most of the fire department, but also the police department, and Disaster Communications team, and Jim, correct me if I miss anything, not only supports the, the Sheriff's Department, but supports the, a lot of the smaller cities within the county. That is, that, is correct. Okay. And then there's also support of the, uh, the central county uh, EOC. EOC, right, the main EOC, right. So, um, but it's very important that we know what, we get the intel from them, they get the intel from us, it's very, very important. One of the things I sold the city on was, do you know what's happening with any of your hospitals? Yes, we get it from the fire department. How does the fire department get it? They didn't know. Well, the reason, they really don't know. They get it actually from ReadyNet. And ReadyNet is something the hospitals use, and if ReadyNet is working, it's a great tool. But if it's not working, it's down, or internet is down, it's down. So it's very important for the ARIES operators to feed that to the ACS team, teams. And the ACS needs to feed it to the city and county because not all of our hospitals are in the city of Los Angeles, some are in the county of Los Angeles. So it would be very important for the DCS people to find out what that is. And the DCS people could feed the city EOC some vital information. So it's very important to bring all the ham groups together. Again, you're going to still, uh, yes ma'am.
Uh, they have not, and I don't think they're going to. I think it's going to. It's very difficult for the AWL to handle that because different areas require different vetting on a national level. Even if the league vetted us, um, local police departments, counties, cities would want to vet us again. So they wanted you to go to Life Scan again. They want to do it, and and we've actually been struggling with this, uh, David and I, with the city and county um, on who's going to pay for for that also because even though you get a live scan through the police department or the sheriff's department, there's a charge for that that, that, that goes back to the, the, for the department, to the police department, to the fire department, you know, and it can be anywhere from $25 to about 80 some odd dollars for a law enforcement agency to do that. Well, city of LA, city of LA said, well, we can't afford that. Okay. And we said, well, how are you going to deal with contingent volunteers? And they said, well, we, we have a plan for that and we're going to budget for that. And, and that's going to be a minimal background check. It's going to cost us $20. So the sheriff's department actually, in this case, actually stepped up and said, we'll go ahead and do the live scans. And uh, we're, working, we're working through the credentialing process and, and, and how that information is going to be transferred from the county to the city because there's actually a live scan number that gets associated with it and we're working it. But you know, you're right, there is no uh, national vetting, but I don't think it would work anyway. It, it, it really wouldn't. Uh, well, I mean Right, there, there is not. Right, and, and you have to work with your local agency and see what they want to do. Yes? There's always been the recommendation to ARIES members that they also be a RACES member, member of some local RACES organization, which means they would probably have the vetting as a member of that organization. So if you could show that ID that locally you know it has the vetting, right. that might help. Uh, ab absolutely. Um, the other thing is some, pe some people in our area's organization are actually vetted by our hospitals we support. Um, a lot of, if in order to get a hospital ID card, um, some of our hospitals actually require a background check and a credit check. Um, a lot of them don't do live scan though, but they do do a basic background check. You know, and the other problem with a background check that, I, you know, dealing with a lot of law enforcement th that I do is it only tells you people who have been caught. <laughs> You know, it really doesn't tell you the character or, or uh, personality of somebody. Um, several years ago, I had a, um, and I don't know if I should say this on, on camera or not, but I will. Um, we had somebody that wanted to join the ARIES organization, and, and I had my ECs tell me who it is, and, and generally I'll say, okay, you know, and we, we watch them. But he told me about this guy and where he lived, and something didn't feel right. So I said, okay, what's his call sign? And I, I looked him up, and I looked. He's had like seven call signs. And I go, that's a little weird. So I started doing some searching on his name and found out that in 2004, he was indicted by the FBI for traveling to other countries to have sex with children. Okay. Now, i got to be careful how we respond to something like that, and I, I won't say who, who he was or what area he was. I said, just tell him that we're not accepting any new membership in that area. And he came back and said, oh, I know what this is all about in the emails, but they got the email string. But you have to be careful. You know, in his case, he wasn't on any list because I checked, you know, Megan's list and all these other lists. He wasn't on there. But at the same time is, you know, I don't know if that guy right there has, I'm just making somebody up here. He looks, what guy are you talking about? <laughs> my imaginary friend over there, my imaginary friend. But I don't know if he, he has an issue. You know, a few days ago, you know, we had the guy that, you know, the uh, person that in Florida shot up the people. Well, there were some signs on him, you know, that he might be, but there are some people that are perfectly normal and one day go ballistic or may have some weird quirks that's never been documented. So what I'd say is you got to kind of watch your people too, even after you do the vetting. And I know all my people. I know all my active people. I know every, I should say I know everything about them, but I, I know their personality, so I know if there's an issue about that person, and, and we had we had one, we had one person that um, she would show up, and I'll use that term um, to the events. But there was something strange about her. Um, came to an event with high heels, mini skirt, and a tube top. Okay, that's not how you show up to an event. But at the same time, I don't. I got to be careful about how I approach that because they can say it's discrimination. I, 
put that person in a uh, non-profile uh, position and, and gave busy, bu busy work. So you have to really get to know your people. And, and you're always going to get the, the, the little strange person. So with whatever vetting you do, whatever live scan you do, always keep an eye. Because ultimately, you have to live with you know, who's in your organization. So, but uh, I think, I think you're, you know, you're right on track. Uh, we talked about uh, learning how each other operates. You know, I, I learned a lot you know, hanging around some of my friends who are DCS and ACS. They operate very differently than, than we do in Aries. Um, and we have a very different mission. One is not better or, diff or wrong, it's just they're different. And we have to understand that. And waiting till a disaster or an emergency is not the right time to do that. Uh, develop common training. And we're going to start doing this uh, hopefully later on in the year. I met with the sheriff's department and uh, the fire department. And we did. And uh, we're going we're gonna to start, we're gonna start coming up with some exercises that uh, involve all of us. Uh, we're going to start uh, talking. We talked about inter monthly interoperability net. You know, we have our own weekly Aries net. And, the DCS and ACS groups have their nets, but it'll, it, we're, we're talking about uh, you know being able to talk to each other on a regular basis. Uh, we're looking at interoperability frequencies and back channels. How do I get a hold of Jim with DCS? Because we don't have a lot of frequencies to begin with in the city and county of Los Angeles, and out, even outside the the regular organized ham groups, you got the individual hams. They're going to be on there and they're going to be rag chewing. What what are we going to do? Um, we're working on group liaisons. Okay, I'm going to send a liaison to DCS. DCS is going to send a liaison to my meetings just to see what's going on in ACS also. And we've actually developed an advisory group, and I'm part of it, and David is part of it there. And it's it's not only the a representative from the ham groups, but it's a representative from all the agencies we support: City of LA, County of LA, Sheriff's Department, Fire Department, uh, LAPD, uh, the EOC, the BOC. Anybody else I missed? Yeah. Again, a lot of this is still in the works. And then communicate with, you know, by any means possible. We always talk about amateur bands, ham radio. Well, I just said, we don't have a lot of frequencies. You know, you should learn how to use the agency's uh, equipment. Uh, DCS, you guys use the sheriff's equipment all the time in addition to your ham stuff, right? Yes. Yeah, ACS does the same thing, and, and uh, you know, we're starting to, uh, to do it also. The other thing is commercial bands. If you can get a commercial license and get some commercial frequencies, and nothing wrong with using those. Just don't use your call sign on them. Uh, cell phone, satellite, internet, mesh, runner, smoke signals, whatever it takes. Uh, July 8, 2017, uh, where I live, San Fernando Valley, we had a major blackout. Okay, big transformer blew. I contacted one of my hospitals, I deployed to one of my hospitals, and I found out when I got there, I had no cell service. Surprise, surprise. Why? Because everybody was on their cell phone. And what happens when you get on the cell phone? I don't say, hey, Jim, do you have a blackout? And he goes, yep. And he hangs up. But what's happening? on? Well, everything's dark. I'm looking down the street. And we, we spent 20 minutes talking about it. Well, the bandwidth shrinks up on cell phones, and nobody can make a call. So I could not call some of my other team that were unaware of the blackout, because it didn't affect a larger region. So luckily, I was, gonna be able, I was able to get a few calls out. And uh, this, the other David here and Marty and, uh, and a few others, we got on nets. We started calling hospitals and find out what their status is. So get it out. So having said that, I now have a satellite phone because I think it's very important. It is expensive, but it is very, very important. Agency relationships, what we started, to, what we're really here to talk about. It's very important to develop the relationships. I mean, uh, when I started uh, Aries, and uh, many of us started outside a few, a handful of hospitals, we didn't have any other relationships, and nobody knew who we were, even some of the hospitals. So, uh, very, very important. They need to know who you are and what you do. Not only your supported agencies, but uh, everyone. You're going to work with some of them in the Unified Command. So they need to become familiar with you. You may need their assistance and vice versa. Law enforcement relationships are very, very important. Um, I had somebody in my organization above me a long time ago who's no longer around. Says, I don't want you working with uh, police and, and CHP. 
And I go, why not? He goes, they don't need to know. They don't need to get involved in what we do. I go, they absolutely do. Because if I'm trying to get past the roadblock, who better than the police say, hey, I know who those guys are. They're okay. They recognize my ID card, especially the CHP. So I started developing with the CHP. What did we do? We got them trained. As ham radio, some of them trained as ham radio operators and some of their senior volunteers. We built them a go box and we invite them to our drills. Very, very important. We did the same thing with uh, uh, you know, uh, some LAPD uh, officers. Extremely important. Now they all know who, who we are. The other thing is, it might get you out of a ticket. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just saying. If they see that thing and they feel, by the way, you know so-and-so, you know, I trained him and I work with this captain. Hey, I don't know. Might get you out of a ticket. That's $500 right there in LA. I don't know what a, I don't know what a ticket is in Arizona. What's a ticket in Arizona? Average. Nobody knows. Everybody's good. Everybody's a good person here. Good. Good. They're all Aries members with cards. Is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> but it could work the exact opposite, too. So you could say, hey, do you know so-and-so from the CHP? He goes, yeah, I hate that guy. <laughs> Two tickets for you. <laughs> so um, they also may resupply you. I met with the uh, National Guard uh, uh, commanding general for all the California National Guard, and he was asking, well, where do you get your funding from? How do you do stuff, and where do you get your food and water in a disaster? I said, well, we bring it with us. And he goes, well, what do you do in extended periods? And I said, well, we haven't figured that out yet. The city and county aren't really uh, able to support us. He goes, well, in my card, contact my office. There's something we might be able to do something for you. So. Now, we have to be careful with those last two items, because one of the things we're trained in DCS on is this DCS card, it doesn't mean a thing. Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't. And you must never use it as if it meant anything. A absolutely. And, and actually, the back of our ID cards, it says it exerts no authority. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Never use it. Joking around, yeah. you can do that. But, but you know, work, have the relationship. Yeah. It, you, don't, you don't want anybody ever to use your ID card, even though people do. But uh, Jim is absolutely right. The other thing is agency relationships are earned. Don't demand an agency relationship. I've, I've seen this happen over and over again, and it does not work. Just because you're part of an MCOM group, don't expect to be accepted. Um, I know somebody in my organization many, many years ago, it was like 2009, and he went into a big hospital group and says, I am so-and-so, we're from the county, we have an MOU, and we're here to support you in just the way you gotta do it. Guess what? They asked him to leave. Okay? And I, didn't believe it at first, but I heard it from multiple people that were there. Um, you can't do that. You really, really can't do that. Your actions will also speak better than words or your promises. You can promise anything, but when they see it, they're going to believe it. And a term I heard, you know, I've, been, I've used back from my military days, you command respect, you don't demand respect. People will come naturally to you if you prove yourself. That's why I get invited to places, because you know, they, they know who I am. You know, uh, get also get invited to dr participate in drills and exercises, especially for, you know, if you have a new Aries group, okay? You know, you're, you're in the mountain communities, they may not all know you, and the other, you know, you're working with a new sheriff's department, a new fire, you know, find out what they're doing. Say, when's your next drill or exercise? You know, can I, can, is it all right if I come, or some of my people come, we'll, just, we'll be out of the way. It's worked for me. Attend meetings, briefings, and tabletop exercises. I do this all the time. I mean, I'm talking about all the time, weekly basis. I go to somebody's exercise planning and so forth. I learn from these things, okay? Somebody's inviting me somewhere. And uh, the first couple of times, you know, I've been, I invited myself, I just showed up. And I get on the list. You know, when you sign in, now they got your email list, now you're stuck forever, you're volunteered forever. So. Um, and contribute to the planning. You know, I throw in ideas out there. I don't try to change what they're doing. I go, well, how about this? Or we did this over here. And, uh, you know, you, you become uh, important. Ask to be an observer and evaluator. Has anybody ever done that? Very, very important uh, for an exercise. They, they want to see with the eyes from the outside what you noticed during their drills and exercises. Big uh, thing, stay in touch with your served partner agencies. There's turnover, people come and go. Um, and they forget about you because there's not, may not be a drill or an exercise for months and months. But, you know, stop in, talk to them, see what's going on. 
and I also send them information about what we're doing. And uh, we get we get uh, you know people uh, uh, asking me questions. Also invite them to their meetings and drills. Get them licensed. Have them speak at your meeting. You know we just did that uh, in December. We had the CHP come. And, you know he talked about relationships and he talked about what they do and their their what they do in a disaster, what they do on a normal basis. And people love to talk, especially if you're interested in them. And give them awards and certificates. You know, we, we, anytime somebody shows up, I get, I, you know, print out a nice little award, put it in a frame, and give it to them. And they love hanging that behind their desk. And make sure they have your group's organizational chart and contact information. You know, they have to know how to contact you. So make sure you have business cards. Make sure you have something. Don't write it on a piece of paper. You know, go to Vista Print, spend a few bucks, get some business cards, have a org chart. Very, very important. We talked about don't try to sh uh, run a show. You're there to assist and be part of the team. The other thing is some professionals don't, look, don't like working with volunteers. That's just the way it is. Live with it. Deal with it. Also, find the promoter in your served or partner agency. There's always one person that's going to be, hey, yeah, David is great, or Uzi is great, or Bob is great, or, and, and, and uh, they're going to be your promoter. Try to get an MOU with, your, your, with the agency. The other thing that works, that works for me is I go to lunch with them because you talk about everything. I know some of the stuff is common sense or you may think they, they're not going to ever go to lunch with me with you, but they will. You know, you go over there, you want to go to lunch, give them some, some time, you've got nothing. It works out. And you talk about everything. You find the personal, the, the, you know, the, first, the personal touch. So. And then sometimes I go to meetings, I bring the donuts, you know. We'll spend 10, 12 bucks on donuts, show up to a meeting. They like that. They remember you. Corny, I know, but hey, it works. Elected officials are also very important with relationships. Uh, one of the things that I do a lot of is outreach. I mean, I go talk to everybody, and, and, uh, and uh, I've, I've been very lucky to start getting into a lot of our elected officials, our, our local supervisors, councilmen and women. Um, our st uh, state assembly and senators, as well as our congressmen. They can be your best allies. Um, they can uh, they get your city, county, or state agency, or they can get things done within the city and county agencies that you may not be able to. They can help you get grants, and that's one of the things I've started trying to find uh, grants and, and, and uh, they call discretionary funds. Um, also get them trained. You know, we have a couple of uh, council people that want to get trained. We're going to get them ham radio trained. And they may never get on the radio and probably never get on the radio. And that's okay. But now they feel that they're part of, of your team or your, your organization. Get them an ID card, you know, and put, you know, councilman on there and say, has no authority right on the front. Just, just, just a joke around. We do a lot of community events, fairs, neighborhood councils, things you can do, open houses, hospital events. Uh, host public safety fairs, get to know your we talk about get to know your local officials, get the media involved, TV, radio, print. That's the, that's for us the, the hardest thing in the past. So what we recently did is we did an event uh, back in October, which was a state shake statewide shakeout, and the Channel Five cameraman, you know, we started talking to him and convinced him to become a ham, and now he's on the air all the time, and now we have a local contact for with with one of the local uh, TV stations. So it can't hurt. And uh, you know, you, you get a dedicated member now too. I go to a lot of chamber meetings, events. We, when we do events, we do go to stations, get on the air, get the kids on there, get the teenagers on there, and uh, you know, get some younger blood on there. And hold ham classes regularly, get them trained. Uh, Dave, David Mallon here, he holds ham classes all the time. I hold them all, all the time. And uh, we really have to you know, keep this going. Yes, sir. Do you participate in the way? Yes. And that's a, a great way of uh, getting your operation out to other people that are out there to work on disasters. Right. Especially your uh, faith-based uh, organizations and uh, uh, city and county uh, and there too do for us. Absolutely. The question was, do I get involved in VOAD? And VOAD is Volunteers Organizations Active in Disasters. Um, yes, we are involved with the local VOADs, and uh, absolutely. And gentleman brought up a, a, a good thing. Faith-based organizations are a great resource 
uh, for support and getting people trained. Um, the LDS community is very big on it, um, and some other organizations, some other faith-based, we're work, starting to work with some Baptist organizations and Methodist organizations to get uh, them trained. Um, but they're also a go-to place. The church is a go-to place in a disaster. So having ham radio people that are trained is very, very important because they can let us know what's going on. Equipment donations, um, very important. You know, we all buy stuff out of our own pockets most of the time and, and our go kits and so forth. But, you know, we, start, we just started a 501c3 in the Los Angeles area. It's called Los Angeles MCOM Group. Um, it is not to replace any organization. It is not to replace ARIES, ACS, DCS, but it is a organization, and we're working on getting a website up now and a Facebook page. It's where people can find out about us and make donations to any of the ham groups they want, and 100% of that money will go to that group. Some of the problems we've had with, with an ARIES in the past have donated money and trying to get the money back out for a specific project has been difficult. Talking to some of my friends and some of the other organizations, they've, they've raised money or they want to figure out how to raise money and buy certain things. Well, now they can do that. And when somebody donates, they can spe specify what that money is for, and that money will go right back to that organization. So, um, but anyway, having said that, uh, becoming a 501c3, or your, if your organization is, some organizations, especially government organizations, can donate equipment to you, or they can sell it to you for a dollar. So take advantage of that if you can. Um, check out if they do. I just had a uh, an, an organization give me 40 plus Kenwood TK3180 commercial UHF radios. Okay, now they had, in order to surplus them, they actually had to remove the antennas and knobs and so forth, but I, d I didn't care. They took and threw that stuff away. I went and ordered them. Um, so, you know, I have $8,000 worth of radios for just a few hundred dollar investment. And another organization gave me a commercial UHF repeater, perfectly good. Um, I have another agency that gave me two large VHF cavities for repeaters. They just bring the stuff. Once, you, once they know you need it, again, I, I can't say this is going to work for you, but I'm starting to get a lot of surplus equipment because they know we have the need. And uh, so go find out if, if a local school or a local government has this stuff. Because a lot of times they just destroy the stuff or they send it to the e-waste. And that might be a benefit from you. Benefit for you. And then take everything you need. They offer you. Don't ever throw, uh, take anything back. I got one agency that brings me uh, red and white uh, light bars. Still. Can't use, I mean, red and blue light bars. I can't use those because I can't put them in my car. I can only have amber. But I take those and I, and, and, and I, I trade them to, or I give them to another organization that can use them, and I get something back from them. So there's things you can do. And then you can always sell and barter uh, stuff also. You know, a few years ago, I, uh, I came in here and I mentioned an agency's name. And I said, they gave me this stuff. And this person in the classroom called and said, Ruzi said you're giving away equipment, I want mine. Well, that opened up Pandora's box. So whatever you do, don't say Ruzi said, <laughs> because I have no authority. Um, I can just tell you it's worked for me, but you know, get with your local fire department, get with your police department. They're switching out radios and stuff all the time. And if they have a surplus program, there's a lot of equipment you can get out of there. And it shouldn't all come out of your own po our own pockets. It really, really shouldn't, and because we're all dedicated. We all spend a ton of money you know, keeping our equipment up and our antennas up and buying radios and, and coming to ham fest and so forth. So, you know, see, see what works for your area. Anyway, that's the end of my presentation. Uh, does anybody have any questions or anything? Yes, sir. Well, <coughs> and in San Diego County, uh, the Aries is uh, heavily devoted to the uh, support of hospitals and other medical facilities. Uh, because of the exercises are held often during the day, starting very early in the morning, uh, you have a problem with people who well, they got to make their daily uh, bread money, so right. they're not available. Now the state has changed that requirement for the drills to just about include everybody that even hands out a band aid. Where are you going to get the people? I, I don't know. It's a, that's, a, that, that's, that's, a, that's a good question. I, don't, I really don't know. Um, we've, we've had the problem where we can't, it's very difficult to get volunteers to support a drill during the week uh, because we all work. I work and I think most people in here, unless you're retired, work. Um, it's, it's difficult. It really is. And I've asked hospitals, can you do the, 
drill on the weekend. Well, no, we don't want to run into overtime. So and so won't come in. So I don't have an answer for you. It's, 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 I think we all have that situa issue. Okay, another one. Um, I am a member of the RECJCS down here. <coughs> and uh, we conduct our meetings uh, because it's over the whole county. A lot of people are hesitant to once a month driving all the way in from Alcorn or Campbell or you know, 50, 60 miles each way uh, to be at a meeting. So we have adopted uh, Eugene's. But they are, ultimately, uh, the, uh, what I'm trying to say is the use of electronic uh, media uh, to webinar, as an example, to people that are far away and they attend the meetings that way. Eventually we're going to augment it into training. So uh, our long training sessions can be put out to the people that can't be present. I think that's great. I think. And uh, that's what if you'd ever consider that. Yeah, we, we actually have considered that and we're probably going to do that in the, in the in the future. Now we have somebody that has the equipment to do that and he's nodding his head over there. But uh, I, think, I think that's great. Um, and I think it's very important because there are people that can't always come. You know, one of the things we're, we're fortunate in the, L, in the LA area is we have broken up the areas into four districts because Los Angeles, like San Diego, is a lot, large geographic territory. So we have our South District, our Northeast District, our Northwest District, and our High Desert, Desert District. And each of those districts holds their meetings separately and hopefully no one will have to go more than 20 years 25 miles to get to a meeting. But any way you can, uh, using it uh, some type of electronic format to get the information out there, I think is great. So good job. And I know you guys have just uh, appointed some new ECs down there. I think I read something about that. Is that right? Emergency coordinators down yes. in San Diego? I think you have five uh, well, new ECs? We, we, the, the current one is Bruce Griffin. He's been that now for a couple of years. Section manager is also part of the, the crew there, and uh, we have a great training officer that uh, keeps stuff going. One of the things that we do as a community effort is uh, we target new hands because uh, some of the teachers also are related to us, and we have them uh, do a little dog and pony show at their training teaching people how to become hands, uh, to uh, come to the areas we call it our gateway. So we held our meeting, and immediately after the meeting, half a dozen of us will stay behind and uh, be owners to new hands show them how to use the radio. Perfect. And then that's, that's, that, that's spot on. Yeah, one of the other things we've done is when we do hold a licensing class uh, or, a, or a VE session, is I've brought in uh, uh, not only ARIES people, but ACS people, just to talk about emergency communications and, and make sure that people understand that. A lot of people get their license, they get it, and that's the last you hear from them because they either don't know what to do, they're scared to ask, they get mic fright, uh, or they don't know about an organization. So we want to make sure we capture all those people. So very good. Yeah, also, it takes some time, but while I'm picking things in, uh, I also belong to REACT, which many years was considered a CV group, but we've evolved through GMRS and now into the ham radio world. And uh, so because we target events, we get requests we do about 25 events a year, and we find that the, that provides us a bigger challenge than uh, trying to create an exercise. I understand. We're, you know, we get a lot of uh, requests and we can't fulfill them all because you know, try to get 25, try to fulfill 25 events, you know, two plus a month, you're going to um, burn out your volunteers eventually. And not, not everybody has the time. So you got to, you got to balance the events to see which ones are more important and, and get you the best bang for your buck. And you're going to get the, you know, best outcome. Any other questions? Yes, sir, Jim. Um, just a comment on this first question about, and your question of how do we get the people and the, the man out what's necessary for the volunteer work, and I would suggest one important thing to look at is most private employers and most <coughs> public employers have formal programs on the book for public service 
which if they are presented a suitable document indicating that what an employee, what an employee wants to do is public service, they will be permitted and supported in doing that um, as part of their paid employment. Yeah, yeah very, very good point, and Jim is right. There are employers, both in the private sector and public sector, that do get support from your employers, and check with your employees as, or your members to see if their employer does support that. From the area side, we'll probably be providing a document which would assure employers that it is public service. Absolutely. And that might be something we need to work on. Absolutely, I think you're right, you're right. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you very much for coming, and uh, we're gonna make, Cut it short, and uh, we'll, see you guys, we'll see you guys next year. Be safe. Okay, that was some really great information that Ruzi brought us. Hopefully, it's something that you can uh, take back to your Aries group or uh, or other organization and um, have it help you and uh, your organization deal with served agencies and, and other groups as well. Uh, I know it's something that, you know, we talk about all the time, you know, how do you show up when you work with other individuals, whether it, you know, be um, the first responders or in the Los Angeles area, we work with the hospital systems, wh whoever your served agency is. It's really important to uh, show up uh, looking good and have a, a good representation of amateur radio. Uh, again, um, this is just a quick show for me. I wanted to get it out. I wanted to share the information from with you, um, our audience. Um, I hope to get feedback. If you like it, that's great. Uh, if you're other things that you'd like me to cover, please uh, drop me a note at my call sign W0DHG at ARRL.net. Uh, there's a couple other things I'm working on right now. to have some other shows up soon. And um, again, uh, as Gary says, the show's free to watch, but it's not free to make. If you like what we're doing and you want to help support the show going forward, please visit hamradionow.tv, find Arvin, and uh, click on the pig and show some love. Anyhow, uh, thanks for watching uh, episode 392 uh, about Aries and agency relationships. We'll look forward to seeing you soon. This is Ham Radio Now, over and out.